If you remember, I, when I was talking about the INS, I said that this model was mechanical calibrated, so it lost precision over the, the route. If we click on, on the side track and status, we can see, well, this time we are something wrong. We shouldn't have zero. pretty strange we should have lost by this time some precision so instead of uh, number zero the INS should be should be maybe one two or three remember that the minimal safe operating was number five so uh, precision of five or above is um, is not accepted for for navigation so we how can we improve our accuracy well, the thing is we've got to tune a VOR and then tuning that VOR, we can uh, comparing the distance, <coughs> sorry, comparing the distance, the real distance uh, to that VOR, of course, it needs to be equipped with the DME system, with a distance measurement, measurement equipment. Then Concorde compares, the navigation system compares the real distance with the estimated distance according to the uh, coordinates in the in the system but now the problem is that over the Atlantic of course there are not the any VORs available to tune so we've got to wait until we reach to the uh, Canada coast in order to be able to do that we find that the first VOR we are going to find is the VOR of St. John's and we need to have be aware of when we are going to be able to tune this VOR. If we have a look at the distance, remember that in flight simulation we've got more or less a range of about 190 miles. That means that we will be able to tune this VOR very likely between waypoints. Uh, no, sorry. Between waypoints. Oops. Sierra Mike 40 Whiskey. And Sierra Mike 50 whiskey. If we have a look at our program between 40 and 50, that between more or less when we are reaching waypoint number two. So that's what interests me. When we are arriving at waypoint number two with is Sierra Mike 50, I know I'm interested in this waypoint. So because this is waypoint number two, then I'm going to in the IN second INS. Uh, wait a moment. In the second INS, I'm going to change the waypoint between 0 and 2 because I'm interested in the distance of 1263 nautical miles and around 75 minutes. That means that during that time, during 75 minutes, there is really not, there's not going to be much many things to do in Concorde except if you have disabled the virtual flight engineer because in that case you will be needed to be switching the, the fuel transference from the different tanks in order to keep the center of balance um, the center of, of balance uh, of sorry the center of gravity within balance limits so as i said if you are using the virtual flight engineer you can sit back relax and enjoy your flight for 75 minutes otherwise well you can do that now before I actually uh, pause this video and just show you uh, what happens when we arrive at that point, let's prepare some things. So we know that the frequency of this VOR is uh, 113.5. I usually make use of the second of the flight officers. Well, I, I, speaking and remembering at the same time is all for 113.5. My memory is bad on its own, but if I have to think, translate, and remember at the same time, that's very hard for me. Okay, so now this um, frequency is tuned, so as soon as it's available, we are going to see here on the second DME, what's the distance to that DME. Now, uh, if we go into our prepared um, directory, if we, we get into the SIVA installation folder, we go back to our ADEO folder. If you remember here, we've got the root, but there are, apart from the 
uh, AWC files we contains root we've also got ADC files well uh, it just happens that the for the um, for the London uh, New York route it's uh, the route 94 now I can't remember what I learned this should be no it's not 94 actually it's 90 yeah it's 90 uh, so we can see here all the VORs, Copton, blah, 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 London, Cork, and then here we've got the St. John's VOR with these coordinates. Now, there are two ways in which we can um, prepare our INS for the update. If we've got one of these ADC files, okay, no problem. The only thing we've got to do is to load it and everything will be automatic. Otherwise, we need the, the geographic coordinates and the frequency and we can introduce these coordinates manually. I'm going to show you both ways to do so. Well, the first thing, of course, is to open the uh, INS. Then we select the waypoint mode. In the real Concorde, we, um, the pilots had to switch at the same time uh, keys 7 and 9 because uh, obviously with a mouse we are not able to press 7 and 9 at the same time so the trick uh, is to right click 7 and right click 9 now as you can see all the waypoint 1 has turned into 0 and then the from 2 start to blink that means we are in the DME updating mode now, we can do two things. One, enter manually the coordinates, just as we did the, the indicated where we were at the beginning of the INS ali, uh, aligning process, or we can load a card. In this case, instead of a root card, we need to load one of the ADC cards. In this case, remember, it's card number, I closed it, card number 20. And then we are going to get these waypoints inside the INS. So have a look at, um, because we've got selected number one, as soon as I hit the load, you're going to see 51, 29, well, this VOR coordinate. So uh, hit 90 and load. And as I said before, these are the coordinates that are loaded. So the only thing we've got to do right now is if we want to update, uh, we will select our um, our VOR, which in this case is waypoint number five, and then we sele select change waypoint number five and click insert. And when we reach to that point, I will show you what happens. Right now, of course, uh, we are out of range, so this this is not going to do absolutely anything. So we clear now. If we want to manually do it, do this, I'm going to go to waypoint number one, and then the only thing I've got to do is have a look at this um, coordinates. We can use FlySync Commander also, or any other any other application. I'm just going to make this smaller. No, anyway, no, it, it doesn't work anyway. Okay, and I see that the coordinates are north 47291, north. I've got to believe that memory, really. Uh, 472921, 47291, 47291, 47291, insert, and then go for, I'm just going to check, I don't trust myself, uh, here, so 47291, remember that we've, we've got to round up, so if the last one is 07, we round up and use number one. Next is 52511 West. 52511. Insert. And check again. 52511. Perfect. There we have it. Now, as again, if we wanted to update right now, change waypoint number one and insert, but it's not the moment now, so we leave it what it is. Now, um, well, I'm going to leave it there, and once we get to the updating waypoint, I'll just, 
well, if we want to get out of the waypoint mode, we've got to um, click twice and then st stops blinking and we recover the normal functionality. Remember that we still have got 67 and a half minutes to get to waypoint number two, more than 1,000 nightfall miles, so uh, it will take us. So see you more or less in an hour for me, in just some seconds for you. See you. Okay, as you can see now the DME2 is active. We are uh, almost at 190 nautical miles, so we can start the uh, DME updating process. Uh, what I usually do is I leave the... <coughs> <coughs> sorry, <laughs> I still have my voice badly. I'm really sorry about this. Uh, the INS1, I leave it for the navigation and then I use uh, INS2 for the DME update. So we open the INS, if you remember we set waypoint and right click number 7 and number 9 and we enter the DME update mode. I'm going to zoom in because we have to pay attention to this red icon over here. Maybe we can see better if we take the look of the flight officer. This is the icon we have to pay attention to. Now, if you remember, we had, uh, it was waypoint number five, but we also added manually to waypoint number one. So we can use either of them. Uh, if you have a look at this address, 4729, 4729 is the same. So I'm going to use the, ME, uh, the waypoint number one. So now we change, change waypoint number one, click insert, and now this red light is going to turn orange. That means that we've started the DME, uh, sorry, the <coughs> <coughs> uh, sorry, the DME updating process. Now we are updating, improving the navigation precision. Uh, I don't know exactly what happened, but because I saved the flight, uh, we have a precision of zero, which is uh, which shouldn't be zero by now. Actually, the 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 maybe we, at, at this point of the of the route should be around five six or um, sometimes even seven um so there's so definitely something wrong with the loading of of my last flight but this is the process and this is how we would update the um, update the precision of our dme so the only thing we've got to do now is is if you remember the next uh, waypoint card is uh, waypoint number seven between waypoint seven and waypoint nine sorry seven and eight we've got to load the card 11. so the only thing we've got to do now sorry uh, wait a moment i'm confused no sorry it's waypoint number four sorry um waypoint number four so between waypoints number four and number five we've got to load the segment the card number 12. so We've got to wait now. Uh, if we have a look how long we've got to... I'm going to click shift number seven. Uh, once again, I can put it in manual change from waypoint zero to waypoint four. Uh, we have 400 nautical miles around 25 minutes. So uh, there's nothing else to do uh, during the next 25 minutes unless, of course, we uh, are not using the virtual flight engineer and then we should be having a look at the fuel but uh, in this tutorial we are going to skip that part so after 25 minutes uh, i'm going to record again to see how we change the um, the the root card okay so see you then we are now reaching uh, out of the range of the vor so usually uh, when this happens well usually no when this happens uh, the orange light of the DME update is going to go off because obviously without uh, being in range the DME update can no longer uh, happen that usually happens around 190 miles uh, nautical miles and then what I do is I reset the, the the mode I switch off the DME update mode and then switch back to the to the usual mode I, I like to have which is the distance and time to the next waypoint remember we chose waypoint number four which is where we have to change our uh, route card so very soon any moment now 
is going to disappear the DME and the orange light is going to go off there it is so now as I said before what I do is now it's in the DME update mode still in the DME update now uh, it's working again so we change from waypoint 0 which is our current waypoint to waypoint number 4 and then we call 164 nautical miles which is around 8 minutes so see you in 8 minute time for me in just one second for you we are just 1 minute and 18 nautical miles from waypoint 4 uh, remember that um, the INS always loads the next waypoint a little bit earlier uh, depending on how tight is the, um, is the corner of the waypoint uh, so any moment now is going to change from waypoint 3 to the leg 3-4 to the leg 4-5 uh, sorry 3-4 just to 4-5 is when we have to change so we are going to open <coughs> sorry we are going to open the INS window oops sorry about that that was an alarm um, there it is we've got the remote active in the three INS so we make sure we load now uh, we use the mouse wheel to select uh, the card number 12 and then we load this route into the three INSs now that is going to be the last uh, card we're going to load because if we check our route plan next we should change at waypoint number two but then uh, this is the beginning of our start the beginning of our arrival and um, because we the, the end the last part we will be using um, radio navigation aids and well and also I'll talk about this later when we prepare the descent. Yes, we're going to use another waypoint, but it's not included in this list. So for the time being, that is the last waypoint we're going to load. And, <coughs> sorry, we've got to preparate for the descent. Now, the next waypoint that interests us is Kenda. According to the tutorial at Kenda, we need to be, um, no, sorry, well, we need to to reference Kenda, but because of one reason. Now, at Owens, there is an altitude limitation, and we should hit Owens at fourteen thousand feet. So let's follow the tutorial, and let's go advance to the descent. Okay, and here, if we have a look, this is our plan. Now we have to decelerate, pass over Kenda, then get over Lind at Lind between Lind and waypoint uh, 22 de 72 degrees west at waypoint 9 uh, we should reach Mach 1.0 usually more or less around this uh, <coughs> uh, sorry uh, I, I can't I can't help but coughing from time to time now in this leg we should get Mach 1.0 then we continue the deceleration and descent and then finally hit Owens more or less about 14,000 feet. So how do we calculate the descent? Now here we've got the, the, this table which is the most common because uh, I told you before that the standard uh, temperature, the, the external temperature, uh, it was extremely low during our departure. It's very uncommon to find temperatures below 10 degrees, um, 10 degrees below the standard temperature. In fact, uh, temperature has increased quite a lot now, and now it is one degree above the standard temperature. So this is the table we've got to use, and, and this is our reference. The parameters that we have to take into account is the flight level at the moment of the start of the deceleration, uh, what's the external temperature? We are now warmer than minus 10 degrees um, the standard temperature. In fact, we are one degree above. So this is the table we've got to use. If temperature were below those 10 degrees, there's another table further on uh, here with temperature colder than uh, is a minus 10 degrees. But in this case, will be using this one 
Now, the other parameters that we've got to take into account is if we have a tailwind above 40 knots, uh, between 40 knots and 40 knots headwind, or, or taking assuming zero uh, knot of wind. The Concord Perfort system includes a descent calculator, but the current version has got a, a bug, it's got a problem, and it doesn't work properly. But normally, you should get it here to Concord Performance System Descent Calculator. And then the problem is that this very particular version doesn't load the waypoint, but here we would say which waypoint we are interested in and what distance. And then we say at which flight level we start, that we are flying supersonic, and then uh, it automatically calculates the cruise temperature, the average wind component, and we've got every calculation that we need. Now, because uh, this doesn't work, we need to check which is the wind. Uh, we have a wind of 298 at 33, at 32. So we just find any weather calculator. There are a lot of them on the internet. I usually um, have one on my mobile phone, which is the one that I use. So the uh, wind direction is 298 at 32. And our current heading, we are heading uh, 249er. Two four nine. So we calculate and we've got a headwind or tailwind of, in this case, headwind of 21 knots. So because it's 21 knots, we can assume the zero wind. Now, um, the flight level, we are, we are at flight level, we, let's say, let's assume we are going to be at flight level 580, more or less. Then making an estimation, flight level 570, uh, we need 202 nautical miles in order to uh, descend to zero feet. At flight level 590, we need 213. So let's estimate, let's make another, let's estimate that we need around 208 uh, nautical miles in order to be able to get our descent. Now, but we don't have to calculate until zero feet. We need to stop at 14,000 feet. So there's another 14,000 feet. Let's calculate around 28 nautical miles, more or less. So we don't need to, uh, we have to subtract to those 208 minus 28 nautical miles so um, the result is 180 nautical miles now because um, the, everything is explained here now uh, what is the next waypoint that we have to take as a reference the closest uh, point to the deceleration is going to be Kenda so we have to accelerate before reaching Kenda that is our reference now between Owens, which is a flight level 140 uh, or 14,000 uh, 14, feet, and Kenda, if we add up, we've got a total of 118 nautical miles. So if we subtract 118 nautical miles, then the result is 62 nautical miles. So we need to start our descent approximately around 62 nautical miles before we reach Kenda. So now our reference point where we need to focus is in Kenda, which is waypoint number seven. We need to focus at, the, this is the start of descent, seven nautical miles before Kenda. So because that is waypoint seven, now it's very important that we focus our attention on waypoint seven. We are now 3, 376 nautical miles before Kenda. That's approximately around 20 minutes at um, our current speed. Uh, so for the time being, there's nothing else to do but wait until we get at 60, <coughs> well, it's 62, but we need to prepare several things before we start the descent. So uh, that's the only thing we've got to do. Now, if you remember, we updated the DME uh, a moment ago. Right now we are before uh, between waypoint four and five. 
waypoints for them five is 60 wex and seven and 65 west so 60 wex west and 65 west uh, okay so we are in this leg so we could tune perfectly this VOR we could tune the Halifax VOR and keep our um, our INS updating so we have the most accurate position possible for the descent once again I don't know why there's a problem with the with the precision but we still we still are with uh, zero degrees zero level of uh, let's make this auto um, I don't know why <coughs> the, the precision is always zero so we actually don't need any DME updating but usually before I get to the um, to the descent I keep updating so uh, once again I have the mm, most accurate possible descent so once again for the time being there is nothing else to do but wait and once we get close to the, the acceleration and descent point I'll tell you more things we need to know see you in a while we are now at 82 nautical miles before uh, Genda, so I'm going to pause uh, because I have got to explain several things and we would miss our descent point. The procedure for descent, um, uh, once again our virtual flight engineer is going to help us. We could do this manually, but as always we are going to choose the, the simplest way, which is the flight engineer. Now the 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 procedure to activate the flight engineer help for descent is to hit the warning and landing display and pressing this for three, uh, well, for some seconds so that the three lights go on. We're going to do that. We hear the alarm. I'm going to pause again. So that's what activates our virtual flight engineer. We have, we have to do that um, 10 minutes uh, within 10 minutes previous to the actual deceleration and descent. <coughs> Sorry. Now, um, when we press F2, we, uh, the virtual flight engineer is going to reduce the throttles to 18 degrees. And then when we get to Mach 1.0, sorry mac 1.5 is going to make a secondary reduction a further reduction to 32 degrees now we made all the calculations for descent now before we do that <coughs> we've also got to calculate what's our reference speed we did that already or more precisely no not this one this one uh, concord performance system made this calculation for us and estimated uh, approach speed of 161 knots between 154 I can't remember these two values because I don't usually make use of this because they are prepared with such an advance that many things can change and the fuel is going to change so it's actually safer to go to the tutorial now we've got um, We've got 82.4 uh, tons, which is the weight of, of the aircraft, uh, empty. Then we add the fuel remaining, and that gives us the landing weight. And now following this table, we get the reference speed. So our fuel remaining is 18 tons. <coughs> Sorry. 18 tons. Uh, so we add 88.5. 5 plus 18 we get 106 exactly the value um, selected here so our reference speed is going to be 158 so we have to set the speed box uh, not necessary to do the, this right now but where is a uh, inform some information that we need uh, I don't think I can change this no, without unpausing. I'm going to do this later because we are so close now to the, um, the descent that um, we may miss it. Now the second thing we need to do is check the altimeters and radio altimeters. Uh, for that we need the charts. Uh, the usually uh, the most common approach for, for New York Kennedy is runway 31 right. That's why I included in my in my route another uh, waypoint, Catot, which is the initial approach fix for runway 13 right. Now, uh, next, before we start descent, of course, 
<coughs> we need to press altitude hold and switch off auto throttle and then when reaching um, the descent point which we estimated around 62 nautical miles before Kenda we're going to hit F2 uh, in order to start the deceleration so I'm going to leave this page at the moment so that we can add the, um, all these values the bugs and the speed bugs and the altimeters and let's start the descent so I repeat first we activate the alarm then we well we still 68 nautical miles but anyway we can just check altitude hold now uh, we can just keep the throttle settings we can release auto throttle and then we are just waiting for 62 nautical miles and then you're going to see that the throttle is going to go down not all the way through but to 18 the throttle level angle is going to be 18 so 67 65 three and two let's start our deceleration you can close this now as you can see now we keep the altitude uh, zero vertical speed but of course um, our speed is going down we are now below Mach point, uh, 2.0 now we need to focus on speed 360 knots to start the real descent this is just deceleration but not descent. Uh, remember our restriction at Owens was 14,000 feet. We're going to go directly all the way down to 14,000 feet. So that's the altitude we're going to select. There we go. <coughs> we just have to wait. Ah, so, oops, I, I forgot. Uh, when we start the deceleration, we um, usually start the, um, the clock in order to measure uh, how long it takes us to, to get down. Not an essential thing to do, but just as a reference. Now, when we get 360 knots, we click on Altitude Acquire and for this sense, by default Concorde is going to go down to a vertical speed of 800 feet that's a default that is going to make a gentle beginning of the descent and then once we reach 350 we click IS hold so now we click hasn't been to be very precise the altitude acquire now the selected vertical speed goes to 800 feet and then when we reach 350 just click IS hold and there we go so now uh, we we instructed the autopilot to keep the 350 knots during all the descent <coughs> now our main um, Thing to notice is going to be Mach 1.5 when the virtual flight engineer is going to further redact. Now remember, uh, we need to the reference landing speed 158 knots, more or less 158 knots. Uh, remember that now we have to set the decision altitude. Uh, well, the airfield elevation 13 feet and the decision altitude. 200 because we, I think it's referring to the another um, runway but as we've seen in the charts our decision altitude is going to be 50 radial so 50 feet of radial and the landing altitude is just almost sea level so our reference bag hasn't got to go very far now just check as a reference our throttle angle lever is going to go down now to 32 degrees when, once we get mic uh, 1.5. I'm going to make just a small pause and continue when we get that speed. We are almost there, so you're going to see how the 
throttles go farther down and we, we reduce. Now we are just making a turn. Remember that at supersonic speed the bank angle is pretty limited so Concorde has to begin the turns um, quite uh, in advance. Have a look that now because of this turn the, the um, vertical, uh, sorry, our uh, indicated speed has been reduced. Now we increase the vertical speed, the rate of descent, to recover those 350. Next point to, to focus, which actually is in the checklist, Mach 1.5, check that the virtual flight engineer reduced the throttle level angle. Now Mach 1.3, remember the intakes, remember that they should, uh, no, the aircraft, this side. Remember that <coughs> the ramps have to have to go up now. So if we have a look at the ramp position, as soon as we, well, they are reducing already. But when we get to Mach 1.3, they are going to be a, a much important reduction. And that's the only thing we've got to, to take care of, to watch for. Now, uh, we are between 0 0.7 and 8, but remember that our restriction is Owens at 4, 14,000 feet, which is waypoint number 1. So I'm going to use waypoint number 1 as the reference point, which is uh, 82 miles away. Well, now we, ha we cannot take the, the time as a reference because we are reducing our speed. Obviously, this time is not reference. Now, as soon as we get to Mach 1.3, the ramps are going to go up to let all the, the, the airflow get in the engines. And that's the only thing we've got to check. It's an automatic settings, it's uh, controlled by computer. So we can see after Mach 1.3, they go down very quickly. So next, next stop, Mach 1.0. Before we get there, uh, we are going to have a look at the different reference speeds, which are here. Now, for the approach, <coughs> uh, between 15 to 20 miles, 250, before 12 and 14, 210, but we are not going to set, we've already got the reference speed. Now, between five and seven, we need VREF plus 15, uh, because our reference speed was 158 plus 15 is going to be plus 72 or 73. The other reference speed is VREF plus 30 with a minimum of 190. Um, plus 30, we don't get to 90, so we're going to round up to 90. So we've got all the reference speed set. We're getting closer to Mach 1.1. Now we are between 0 0.98 and 9. 0 0.8 and 9 are between Linz and 72. We should get Mach 0.1 between 8 and 9. So, yeah, more or less. It's not exactly. Maybe we are going to hit 72 West, not at one, a little bit faster than Mach 1.0, but pretty pretty close now this point remember that um, we are getting closer to the coast and we cannot fly at supersonic speed uh, too close to the coast because the sonic boom would be heard and we've got of course nice restrictions for that but not exactly but we are pretty pretty close now when we get to Mach 1.0 there are more things to do of course always things to do in Concord uh, all right, now Mach 1.1, we can set the throttles to idle. Uh, then remember we switch it off the pressure static heaters. We need to switch them on. Also, we switch off the, the windscreen heating. We need to set them to low and the visor to on. And finally, if you remember the throttle master switch, uh, <coughs> which is the electronic that controls the engine, we first have the settings as um, as um, I will say it as the main, and now we've got to change to alternate. Now I'm going to pause for a moment just before reaching Mach 1.0. Remember 
that now the sonic uh, boom, the sonic pressure wave is going to turn our uh, vertical speed indicator somehow crazy and after that, that means that we're now below Mach 1.0. So, any moment now. And there it goes. That means, means we are now subsonic. So now we can put our throttles at idle. make sure we are in IS hold and make sure we click on altitude acquired so that we level off at 14,000 feet and we also activate the auto throttles to keep that speed once we level off. Uh, so now shift number three static heat is on we are going to change the throttle master and make sure that the engine stays stable and finally shift number four we make sure that the windshield, the eyes, and visor, and DV are all set. So nothing, mu nothing else much to do until we reach the 4,000 feet. So make another pause, and we'll continue when we level off. In fact, I'm going to finish this video here, this part of the video, and make just a complete the last part uh, for the approach and, and landing. Okay, see you in the next video.